Hello and welcome to Eat Your Backyard. We are going to take a look at some recent damage that occurred. What a beautiful night though. Incredible day and a beautiful night. Really feels like fall. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. On this channel, we implement permaculture in this case, in my small barrier island home here in Florida. I live in zone 10A, and that gives us some really interesting options like bananas and coconuts, as you can see. There you go, Palm Nation, getting ready to work out. I like the sound of that. Yep, I am Happy to say I got to surf three times today. It's just incredible. And I got the best drone footage of my life. If you want to see that, check it out on Surf All Day A1A. I actually got video of my neighbor surfing with two sharks in the face of the wave. And I got it all in high def. I almost couldn't believe that I captured it. Freezing cold, 70 degrees. That's pretty cold. Yeah. I haven't felt 70 degree air temperature in probably half a year. All right, I'm gonna switch over to the untethered internet connection. Okay, I'm back. So, yeah, that allows me to go check on these. In fact, you know what? I don't know. I was going to go right back and trim the Moringa. The, what happened was we got had a little bit of a wind event, and the Moringa that I planted over here on the edge space, you know, I'm trying to put a lot more stuff in my edge spaces. Hey, Brampton Gardener. <laughs> yeah, it's still in the 70s. Oh, 70s sounds nice. That sounds really nice. I'm ready for that. It's a long summer in Florida. It gets a little warm. I think we'll open up the the eclectic bunny run and let out the, you know, Saturday night li uh, live streams are really about letting out the bunnies and the chickens and having fun. But I also want to show you the Moringa tree disaster that happened from the wind pressing it down the other day because it's in the in between two houses that are very close together. I'm going to use these to do the right thing. I've got to, I've got to behead my, my moringa and get it to grow sprouts. I haven't done that yet, but the wind did it for me. Now I'm just going to even out the cut. Hey, Penelope. She actually loves to play with the, with the bunnies. I mean, with the uh, chickens. Let's, let's get the chickens out. Why wait? I know you little hennies. You chick chick. You chick chick. That's it. How many do we have? Hmm? Not all here. There you go. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. One of the chickens had something the other ones wanted. Hello, ladies. All right, you ready? Let's go graze back in the pasture, back, back in the eat your backyard pasture. I can't believe it. In the course of a half a year, I have a pasture. I don't know. I'll fix that later. Not a very, whoops, sorry. This one, come on, come on, come on. Oh no, not that grass. This is very risky behavior, trying to get these chickens inside the inside the bunny run. Herding chickens is not easily done. During the live stream. <laughs> All right. I'm pretty proud of that accomplishment. Mm. 
Yeah, isn't it cool? These hand coos. I like that. Hand coos to see their owner. Yeah, look at you. They're such little sweet hands. Today we got five eggs on the live stream. Five. All right, let's let the bunny magic happen. As I like to say, <laughs> when you have two lionhead bunnies and five beautiful chickens, the logical thing is to combine them. You know, it's like uh, fish and rice. Voila, sushi. Hens and bunnies. Easter. Now, if we get an additional rabbit, we will be able to test the idea of having two rabbits of the same gender in the in the rabbit run together, but not, that might be risky. <laughs> I think you're right. I think you're right about that, absolutely. Blondie, this this one over here to the left. Hey, how you doing? Grows at Alaska. Welcome aboard. So stoked you're on the live stream. I appreciate it. I don't know what the temperature is in Alaska, but here it's 80 degrees. My friend is uh, is making me currently a giant four by four Shishugi Ban Yin Yang symbol for the other side of this fence. It's gonna be on the, the this facing side, not inside, but on the outside. I can't wait, a four by four gigantic, and he's going to finish it Shishugi Ban, using that Japanese like burn treatment of the giant circular yin yang symbol so that should be super cool i'm trading that for eggs which is a big focus of this year i'm going to start doing some videos on what i think is one of the most fun things you can do with permaculture which is to get a network established where you just trade things with friends yeah brampton gardener you need to check out the shark video I'm about to release on Surf All Day A1A. I'll probably release one of them today, but yeah. I'll, I'll just leave it at that. All right. As you can see, Penelope, yeah, Penelope always comes over to be pet. the hole that's their current hole we try to allow them to dig holes and this is an example of a of a good hole some of the holes go like subterranean they're going for like full depth this one's not too bad they can get down to the colder sand <laughs> cool thing is, you know, little Penelope is uh, really, occasionally the hens will bite around the ear. Well, you know, yeah, we'll just bite the end of her ears and she doesn't seem to mind it at all. 
doesn't bother her. Sometimes they'll peck, peck her on her head, and I, I worry a little bit that she might get pecked in her eye. But the hens are not really that, that uh, I don't know what, aggressive. You know, I think because they have so much to focus on. Like, look at this. They're in here grazing once a day, and they love it. Just snapping up all the little pieces of grass and seed. I thought they would like this roosting bar more, uh, AKA the branch of the longin tree that I just trimmed. But to be honest, I might just, I don't know. I might just turn it into biochar. I might burn it. And I'm gonna have a biochar live stream. I'll, I'll post the day when I'm gonna do it. But uh, I'm gonna do a biochar live stream, which is to encourage the practice of biochar because I found that it's a connective piece in my systems that I have in my backyard now. And that is to say, all the trimmings and yard waste I produce now, I either put in my compost bin or they turn, they wind up as branches. So most of it goes in the, the compost bin, but the larger pieces, you know, are kind of the last piece that I have to deal with that I didn't really have an effective way to deal with. And I'm going to burn it and turn it into micronutrients for the systems back here. So I might do that with this as well. I thought maybe the hens would like it, but I think these little, I don't know, it's a little bit too, too flexible and too skinny, but still, I think it provides an interesting kind of structure for them to uh, exist in, interact with, I guess it would be a better way to put it. I think Penelope, I notice a, a difference in little Penelope's behavior there. She seems to have a little bit of extra spring in her hop when she's back with the chickens. And sometimes she'll just hop up and start sniffing the chickens. Look, she might do it here. Yeah, and there it is, see? Yeah, a little sniff, quick sniff. And then out you go. Yeah, you want another pet, don't you? You want a pet? Yeah. <laughs> I know you do. I know it. I know it. Just charge her up and off she goes. Her mane, her lion's head mane. It's getting so pretty now. You see this long, this long hair, these lion head bunnies. For me, this is the ultimate bunny to have. Look at that, isn't that cool? But then also on the cheek. Now, the, you know, she'll let me do this to her because she's just so tame with me. But you see how, how that, they get that, almost like a beard. It's really cool. She's about as soft as anything could ever be. If you looked up soft in the dictionary, you would see a picture of Penelope, probably. And what are you hens doing? Yeah. We just ordered an, <laughs> Jack picked out a sign and uh, it said, beware tiny raptors because they're like little dinosaurs. So we, we ordered that. We're gonna put that up on the on the chicken coop. But you can see how much they love this. It makes me happy to see them so happy. Five eggs. And by the way, this makes the eggs taste really good. They have such a diverse diet. You know, we feed them virtually all all of our quality food scraps, I would say, you know, quality meaning, you know, not the rotten stuff or whatever, but you know, stuff we would eat, we just have left over. Mostly all of that stuff, we just feed them. So, and that is so fun. You know how it's like fun to, growing up by dogs, of course, and pets, it's so fun to feed the animals, you know, like the chickens will eat everything. So you can just, constantly come out and feed them and they're so fun to interact with they love it they like you could see when i called them in the little 
you know, tall we have for them, the chick chick. They come right in. And it's like a very satisfying animal to have. I feel like within the last six months, I've, I've essentially turned my backyard into like a mini zoo. And it's really not that high maintenance of a zoo. It, it's actually become a, a sustainable little uh, system. All right, I think we're gonna go around the front and take a look at that roselli that cracked over and we're gonna trim that moringa. That's the first beheading of the moringa. I do plan on beheading all my moringa because you wanna do that and make it grow up like a shrub. I think we'll let you stay out here. Oh, I want to see if I can put Thumper in a trance. Hey, Thumps. See, these bunnies are so tame that we just leave their cage doors open, open air. They don't jump out. They just sit there, they know. We'll come get them and put them out. They'll have plenty of time to dig holes and whatever, but they seem to be pretty content in captivity which you might not expect. All right, hold on, I'm gonna show you what Thumper does. Uh, he, he will lay on his side like a dog when you pet him in a certain way. I've trained him, one sec. Okay, now if you're new to the channel, you might not know, but if you aren't, you know Thumper, my lion head male bunny. To me, he's a precious treasure. All right, let's see if he'll... Oh, he doesn't want to do it. I don't want to force him. When he's in the mood, you can just push him and he'll actually lay on his side. That's all right. So I'll just give you some pets. Put him out next. Look at Penelope. She has no fear of the chicken. That chicken's a little... All right. See, the interesting thing is that Penelope does not know chicken etiquette but ever, whatsoever and doesn't even care. And I think it's confusing to the chickens because they try their standard, you know, voodoo, whatever they do, that kind of like, you know, puff up or stare you down or make certain sounds and it doesn't even phase Penelope. She just stands there like a rock. So I, it, she has no idea what's happening. Look at her. Like that? Eat that root. Yeah, eat that up. All right, we're gonna leave these guys and we're gonna go out and I'll show you the go for the tour. Maybe we'll pass some interesting things. Hey, hey, stay in there. All right. This is the time of year. I think we back up. Let's remember. Let's remember to get out in our backyards with whoever is in our lives that we love and just spend time. That is worth remembering. My gold, Joe Serrano, the Joe Serrano. I will expand this banana grove, mark my words. All right, 
haha. Lemonade. Mexican sunflower. And the Persian mulberry. It is Halloween after all. I want to check this out before we go around all the way. I have decided to increase the bamboo in my backyard. I went through kind of a crazy bamboo phase where I grew lots of different varieties of bamboo. I had 12 varieties of bamboo in my yard at one point, which is insane. All clumping, but look at this bamboo. Now, <laughs> to me, this is the creme de la creme of bamboo, the ultimate. in terms of my favorite. This, my friends, is Waman Bamboo, AKA Buddha Belly Bamboo, for its Buddha Belly-like shape. Surprisingly, very easy to grow from cuttings. And I didn't even know this was going to turn into a Buddha Belly live stream, but it has. Now, look at these. Bamboo contains silica, right? It's a very odd, like if you've ever, ever heard large timber bamboo, the, the way the canes clack together, there's no other sound quite like it. It's incredible. I produced it in this front yard for quite some time. And, uh, so it's an odd kind of thing. All right, let's let's undress this thing. See how it's like lighter green? It, that'll darken up. Now, you see this black stuff on there? The iPhone's incredible. This is low light. All right, let's do this in front of our tarantula. By the way, happy Halloween. Okay, you see that black stuff? That's, I'm trying to get a side shot. Hopefully you can see that. I love to see the bugs on there. That's, that, those are hairs. Those are little black hairs. And there's something, they're very irritating. If you get them in your skin, they're like a, you know, miniature kind of cactus fuzz, if you know what I'm saying. You know, there's like those little, almost like fiberglass like. Yeah. But now these things, you see, they're pretty rigid. I mean, listen, if you can. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I love it. So I'll put these all in the bucket and they're, I, I don't know. I mean, silicone, is that like bad? Sil silica, not silicone. <laughs> Sorry, people kill me in the comments. It's not silicone. But uh, yeah these actually grow really easy. Not just, not just this variety, but if you want to get into bamboo, maybe I should get, I don't know, what do you think? Let me know in the, in the chat or even in the comments what you think about making more bamboo videos. I mean, I certainly have access to many, many interesting types of bamboo, including, including the Laco bamboo, that black bamboo, the Hawaiian stripe bamboo. These are all clumping varieties. Now these clumping varieties grow very easy from cuttings. I'm gonna give you the 15 second how to grow bamboo lesson right now. All right, you cut down a cane and then you chop it here and you chop it here and then you bury it here. That's it. Then you do what you do to any other plant. You water it, keep it in the sun, whatever. I, I would actually keep it in the shade. Uh, well, anyway, I went over 15. Now, here's another thing curing bamboo. Bamboo has different starch quantities in it. It's not on, not all bamboos are created equal. I know that's a shocker, but some are absolutely delicious, boring beetle food because they're so starchy and they just get chowed down. Some are not so much starchy and they are make more excellent kind of furniture grade bamboo, etc. 
This one actually, although it's Bambusa vulgaris, which is a variety that can be very starchy, there's several varieties I've grown of this type. This variant of it is actually, I found over experimentation of 25 years playing around with this stuff, it will cure very well if you cure it on the clump. And this is something I read they do in Indonesia. They, they cure canes on the clump. Don't know if it's true, don't really care, but I tried it and it works great. So I, I cure it on this and then, Hold on one sec. All right, so. Anyway, this is just, just an incredible type of uh, bamboo that is a useful resource. And I'm actually gonna try to get my friend who's actually doing the, the uh, decoration for the fence out back to see if he can do something with this because it cures and turns into a very useful commodity. I would love to actually make it into uh, wind chimes, something like, this is a very old Eat Your Backyard video if you, I'm going to look it up on the, old, the history of each your backyard, but this wind chime that I made years ago, it's withstood hurricane after hurricane. 